Today's video is a step-by-step -step guide to using tracking in Xero. Tracking will sometimes work for you instead of projects and that's always good news because tracking is free whereas zero projects you have to pay for. Today we're going to look at our property investor and he has properties that are let out on an ongoing basis. So tracking will work for us. They're not projects with a start and an end date, they're continuous. So we're going to track property by property. So I'm going to show you how to set up tracking how to input the transactions and then how to run reports. Let's go into Xero and I will show you how. Okay, let's go ahead and set up our tracking category. So we go to settings, general settings, and then we choose tracking. Then we say add tracking category and then we give it a name. So we're going to call it property. And then we're going to add our properties. And once we're happy, we just select save. OK, fix the spelling mistake. Once we're happy, click save. OK, our tracking categories are set up. Now let's look at creating a sales invoice. So new sales invoice, choose the date we want. Enter a value. Enter a sales code, which is property income. And then we will see that there's a new field. Now it's difficult to read it here because there's not a lot of space, but trust me, this says property. I don't think I can expand it, but what I can do is I can click on the drop down and I can choose the property that this sales invoice relates to. So let's select High Street. And then once we're happy, all that we do is approve. OK, it's another sales invoice. Again, we go to the property field, select the property. So this time it's Grove Crescent. Happy with it, approve. And our third sales invoice for the month of March, select Ashgrove Lane. And that's it. OK, now let's look at tracking when we've got a purchase invoice. So let's add a bill. And there's some maintenance costs that we need to include. So here we have our bill and it's grass cutting for the three properties. So go to the property and we select High Street, Grove Crescent, Ashgrove Lane. So purchase invoice, three separate lines so that we can code them to the three separate properties. Happy with that, scroll down and approve. And that's your purchase invoice tracked. OK, if we have a transaction in Xero where tracking by property is not relevant, when we come to the property field, all that we do is ignore it and then just approve our purchase invoice. So there's no tracking being done on that purchase invoice for stationery. OK, we've recorded sales, we've recorded purchases. Now let's look at the reporting when we use tracking. So reports, and we're just going to select the old style profit and loss. That's the preferable one for this. Let's choose the date range. So we only want the current month. Get my brain in gear and we'll find it. OK, 1st of March to 31st of March. And then we're going to select more options. Now we see Ignore job, we come to filter by property and we can select not to filter, which is the default, which will show everything. Or you can show individual properties. But what we want to choose is the option for all properties because we've made some changes. We want to update. Now we've got a profit and loss account for the current month and we can see we've got properties listed. The final column is an unassigned column, i.e. anything that we haven't tracked by a property. And then we've got the total for the month. So there we can see the income property by property. And obviously we've only got the garden maintenance costs, the grass guzzlers, but we can see those property by property. And the result that you're looking for is to be able to track your profitability property by property. 
hopefully everything in unassigned is correct that it should be there. If you weren't sure, you can drill down and make sure that it shouldn't be assigned to a property. As always in a report, you can export and your options are Excel, PDF and Google Sheets. OK, let's quickly look at the new style profit and loss. So if we go to all reports and select profit and loss, but this time the new that some of you might now be using. So let's change to the month that we're interested in and let's do an update. And what you will see is you have your complete profit and loss. So everything for the months of month of March. If we go to report settings, yes, you can filter by property, but the default is all. And then other than that, if we don't want all, we can only show one property. So that's why I prefer the old style report because I like to see my profit and loss list in them property by property. But if you only want to look at one, you can use a new style report. So my preference is the old style report, but using tracking, you can see your profitability property by property. If you found that useful, I would appreciate a thumbs up and why don't you subscribe to the channel so that you can get notified of our new videos as and when they appear. Until next time, happy zeroing.